Well, this morning, the Conservative MP and uh, long-time champion of uh, Brexit, Bernard Jenkin, has written an article in The Guardian attacking the Treasury for holding back Brexit. Mr Jenkin uh, joins me now. I mean, before we come on to the Treasury, the opening line of your article is, there is no intrinsic reason why Brexit should be difficult and damaging. I mean, is that an assertion or a fact? It's a fact. <clears throat> why? Um, well, if, if the EU and the UK... Uh, we're both agreed. That, not. Uh, well, well, just a minute. We're both agreed that prosperity and jobs are the priority. Then everyone would prioritise that, and we'd make sure that there was a frictionless border. We'd make sure there was mutual recognition of standards as we cu establish a customs frontier. And the, the EU would have been talking to, talking to us from day one after the referendum about what kind of future trading relationship we should but have. Just remember this: 23rd of June last year, we had the referendum. The EU said, oh, we can't possibly negotiate with you until you've triggered Article 50. So we triggered Article 50. And then they say, well, we can't discuss any long-term relationship with you until you've cleared up this, this and this. Yeah. So we've been discussing this, this and this. And the Prime Minister finally goes to Florence, makes a very emollient and conciliatory speech, which is welcomed. And, then, and President Macron still says, oh, we still can't discuss the long-term relationship between well, you. Well, hang on. I think they're, they're just digging in. Well, I think there are two ways of looking at this. One is that we had a general election in between and we didn't publish any position papers on the key points no, no, but they uh, have, until no, a year later as well, as they, have, as they did. So, they have I refused mean, it's, to negotiate It's with the us. old story that takes two to tango. No, but, but they are re they're still refusing to discuss. Also, we also... Are when, you denying this? No, hang on. They're still no, refusing to discuss a long-term trading relationship. We proposed that everything should be discussed at once. Yeah. They said it won't be discussed at once. They wanted a two-phase process, a divorce and then yeah. future relations. And we accepted that. We have complied with well, that. Well, um, I think we've been trying to be as emollient and cooperative yeah. as we possibly well, we accept, can. We accepted but that we process. But we don't seem to be rewarded much yeah. for that. They, yeah. what, I mean, Theresa yeah, May well, says, yes, we will consider helping yeah. you with the European budget in the Florence speech. And they say, oh, well, that's not good enough. You've got to put billions and billions and billions of money on the table. They haven't actually said that. Well, uh, uh, actually, they have. They no, keep they talking. They've, they've talked about as, many, they've as much said as they 100 don't, billion they, they euros. They said they don't expect to agree a figure until the end of the process. No, well, they, no they've been talking about 100 billion euros. But anyway, let's leave all this aside. I mean, the point is <coughs> that um, <coughs> the British government is now talking about an implementation phase or a transition mm -hmm, phase. Mm -hmm when they're saying most of our economic relationship with the European Union would stay in place. Are, are you content with that? Well, it depends what the arrangement is that we're heading for. Um, it seems to me you can only have an... And the Prime Minister says this too. You can only have an implementation period if you know what you're implementing. And, and there's no point in... Uh, uh, it seems that the CBI and the city mm. and other people are suing for a long transition period but without focusing on what the long-term relationships yeah. are actually going to I mean, be. I mean, the engines, and, the engines of the economy, the CBI and also Well, they're the city. not, actually. The city uh, is. No, uh, it's one of our biggest foreign exchange owners, but, but there are plenty of people in the city who are getting fed up with this protracted uh, stalling <laughs> that's going on at the moment. But a lot of people would just uh, say that you campaign, can I just you, you the campaign the for a vision of Brexit, and it just has sadly turned out, we're just no. hearing from Ireland, much more complicated than you thought it was or said it was going to be. No. Um, in, the, in, the, in the city, there are people agitating for trying to remain in the customs union for as long as possible. Trying to, and we are going to finish up at this rate uh, with the EU still instructing us what laws to make and handing down court judgments and uh, um, controlling our immigration policy and all that. We are going to be paying for the privilege. That's, well, that's, and, that's and politics, the, billions, not economics, isn't no, it? No, no, it is politics. But if the European yeah. Union is playing destructive politics yeah. and putting their own political right. point scoring above the prosperity of their yeah. own countries yeah. and the people that are employed in the yeah. industries that export to this country. Who's responsible for that? Uh, and where does the Treasury fit in this? Uh, the headline they put on your article, on Brexit, we just can't trust the Treasury. Do you well, that, that? those are not my words. No, I understand that. Um, I think it's very hard for officials to know what to do when there's a certain amount of disagreement in the Cabinet. And... Uh, if you, if you listen to someone like Sir Nick McPherson, who is until recently, until recently the Permanent Secretary in the Treasury, and you hear how stridently pro-Remain his views are and how uh, opposed to uh, the yeah. government's policy he is, uh, you know, I yeah. feel that but we some had officials... But Davis being... yesterday just hmm? saying, look, there's no two ways about it. There is going to be an economic price to pay for Brexit. Well, that's his view. I remember being well, he's told... He's entitled to it, isn't well, he? Well, he's entitled to his view. But um, I actually don't think he's right. I think 
It's possible the EU is going to, I think they're going to try and impose a punishment Brexit on us. I, I, think, I think they need I mean, to, aren't you just um, really trying to turn this into a battle with Europe and the nasty EU, basically because it's a bit of a mess and you want someone to blame? No. Uh, what I wanted and what will be delivered yeah. is the promises yeah. delivered in the referendum campaign that we will take back control over our laws, our borders and our money and the right to make trade deals with third countries. And the EU is finding this very, very hard to accept. Do and you... and the, the way the EU is behaving is rather underlining okay. why so many people voted to leave the EU. Would it help if uh, Philip Hammond was sacked? This isn't about personalities. The Prime Minister is entitled to impose her will on her cabinet and uh, uh, she should use the authority yeah. of her office well, to do so. Well, that's not a no, is it? Uh, it's up to the Prime Minister, you, who you, she has you, in her you cabinet. Be bothered if I am not advocating reason. anybody be appointed or sacked. This is, I'm only interested in the policy. No, but you're attacking the Treasury. The man in charge well, of the think, Treasury is Philip Hammond. I think Should the he go? I think the Treasury has got a mindset that is very pro-Remain. Including and is, the Chancellor. And is n and, and I think the Chancellor, I'm not talking about the Chancellor, I'm talking the Treasury as an institution has got a very Remain mindset but they were very discredited after the referendum when their dire forecasts no. didn't come true. We were meant to have another half yeah. a million unemployed by now, and yeah. employment's carried on growing. Would it be better if Boris Johnson was Prime Minister? Uh, I'm very happy with Theresa May, and I'm, uh, th Theresa May has my total and unqualified support. But if Boris took over, it wouldn't be look, a problem. Look, I know the media always want to turn this into a soap opera about personalities. Why don't you actually deal with the issues? Well, those are the people we vote for, you no, see. No, That's no, the point. Well, the policy is to leave the European Union and to negotiate the best possible deal unless we're prepared to plan for no deal and spend money on being prepared to leave without a deal in 2019, then the EU's got us over a barrel. And I think the Prime Minister is going to make that clear today that we're not over a barrel. Barry Jenkins, thank you very much thank indeed. You very well, much. if you want the other view...